Hey guys, Mike here and in this video we'll see how the Nokia Lumia 925 compares to the most popular phones of the moment, the Apple iPhone 5, the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. We're not getting in depth here, we're just skimming through the main differences between these in a quick and easy to understand clip, but more detailed videos will follow so stay close and subscribe. Anyway, the Lumia 925 is basically an upgraded 920. It comes with this new redesigned body that combines metal and plastic into a handset a lot more compact than the previous Nokia flagship was. It's about 8.5mm thick, weighs around 140 grams, and with its rounded edges should be quite comfortable to hold in hand. Nokia also upped the screen on their Lumia, replacing the LCD panel with an AMOLED one and worked on improving the camera experience, both slightly redesigning the camera's ensemble but also improving their software and imaging algorithms. Besides that, the 925 is close to the 920, running Windows Phone 8 with a bunch of useful Nokia software bundled on the same dual-core Snapdragon S4 processor. You might have expected a bump in technical specs, but I don't think one was necessarily needed, as the 920 was a very snappy device and the 925 will be as well. Keeping the old hardware also allowed Nokia to have the same 2000mAh battery on the 925 and that's enough to get the phone through the day. Alright, so how does the 925 compare to the iPhone 5? Well, first, the iPhone is a smaller and lighter device, so it might be more comfortable to use than the Nokia for many of us. Aesthetically, both devices are gorgeous and it's up to you to pick which one you like best. Of course, there is a smaller 4-inch screen on the iPhone, hence its more compact body, but it's a sharp, vibrant and bright screen, capable of displaying excellent colors. In short words, it's perhaps the best IPS panel ever fitted on a phone. The Lumia 925, with its AMOLED panel, should offer better blacks and contrast, but lacks in terms of brightness and colors accuracy. Hardware-wise, none of the phones excels, but both are going to be very snappy and will deal with all sorts of tasks and multimedia content at ease. The iPhone 5 will handle better subcomplex modern games and also has the strength of the iOS ecosystem backing it up, but Windows Phone has grown a lot lately too. As for the camera performances, the iPhone 5 is a reference between camera phones, but the Lumia 925 promises to outmatch it in each and every way, both when it comes to the overall image quality, but also when it comes to software features, bundling the new smart cam app. We'll see. In the end though, the iPhone 5 is more expensive than the Lumia 925 and that might matter a lot to some of you. Apple's handset still has its strong points, like the OS, ecosystem and the compact size, but with the 925, Nokia did narrow the gap. Now, if only Microsoft could do the same with their Windows Phone 8 OS. Android handsets are right now dominating smartphone sales, with Samsung as their spearhead. So how does the Lumia 925 compare to the Samsung Galaxy S4? Well, there are plenty to talk about, besides the obvious OS and software differences. The Galaxy is more customizable, gets to access more and better apps, and bundles a set of nice Samsung apps and gestures, like AirView and the Air Control commands. The Lumia puts Office, the Here Navigation Suit and Nokia Music on the table, but I'm not sure that's enough to even the odds. Besides that, the S4 is clearly the more powerful of the two, and you'll see it when it comes to playing games. For everyday use though, both are incredibly fast. The two devices feature AMOLED screens, so should have the same pros and shortcomings. However, the S4 packs the larger 5-inch display with 1080p resolution, so it is the sharper of the two. Yes, it does use a pentile matrix, but that shouldn't matter much. Of course, the larger screen also leads to a larger body, and the Galaxy S4 is the bigger device of the two but it is very thin and very light, weighing about 130 grams. The plastic case is probably why the phone is so light, but it also makes it feel fragile and rather cheap, next to the metal and plastic body of the Nokia. All in all, the Galaxy S4 does have plenty of aces down its sleeve, but Nokia has its own too. And more importantly, it promises to be the better camera phone of the two. The Lumia 920 outmatched the S4 in most cases, especially with low light shots, and since the 925 packs an improved camera, mainly software-wise, we could expect the 925 to come on top here. How about the HTC One, the other popular Android flagship of the moment? Just like the Lumia, the One is a splendid built handset with an aluminum and polycarbonate body, so it's a tie between them here. It runs Android with some software tweaks from HTC, thus comes with all the benefits offered by Google's OS, and its shortcomings too. It has a large 4.18-inch screen with an LCD3 Full HD panel, and that should make it brighter and more natural looking than the AMOLED on the Nokia. The 925 has the excellent contrast, deep blacks and extra sensitive touchscreen on its side of the table. As for the camera, the HTC One offers excellent low light and video performances, 
but the 4 ultra pixel sensor lacks the number of pixels and the details required to get good fair light shots as well. So I expect the Nokia Lumia 925 to outperform the HTC One as an everyday shooter. In the end, there are many reasons why you could get the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One over this latest Nokia Lumia, starting with Android and ending with the many extra features offered by at least some of these phones. Tiny details like IR blasters, SD expansion slots and removable batteries. But the Lumia has the snappiness, the camera and the price on its side. So unless you really want the best phone on the market, the Lumia 925 can be a good pick as well. That's about it for now. And yes, we haven't gotten depth in this video, but stay tuned. Once we get our hands on the Nokia Lumia 925, we'll have it through our standard set of tests and we'll post our usual detailed review and comparisons with all these devices mentioned here and more. In the meantime, let me know which one of these four phones you would choose right now and why. And don't forget to subscribe for my future updates, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to miss them. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.